So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to generate both structured and typed output from Alama using the Python libraries Instructor and Pydantic. And I'll even be showing you a bit later on in the video how you might be how you might go about using this for some basic web scraping. So if we take a look at this uh, call that I've got here to Alama that literally calls out to the Llama 2 model. And it says list five cities from around the world and their countries with a short description. So if we go ahead and run that on the command line, we can get back a response and we'll see that hopefully it will answer that. So we can see we got back a response there along with a uh, cities from around the world with a short description. So um, we've got a perfectly reasonable response there, but it's not particularly useful to us if we want to use that to pipe into something else. So typically what we'd need to do is take that and uh, pass it and put it into some sort of structure so that we can then use it. So we could do that and typically we use JSON. So we could uh, immediately on our um, call here out to uh, Alama. So we're using the Alama API, I should say. So I could just say um, with a short description in JSON format. So that's the most basic kind of way that you would attack that um, and, and try and resolve that. And you can see here that we've got back a response. If I clear that down so we can see a slightly different response. So we had a JSON response there. Um, if we try this a number of times, what we might find is actually that structure varies. So we can see here that the next time that we called it, it's actually come back with descriptions there. Now I did ask for descriptions, but it didn't give it in the first instance. So the problem we got there is that um, because of the um, the variation there that we're going to have to do some manipulation and parsing and kind of factor in that and testing on our on our library that's kind of feeding that's reading this data on the other side so that's frustrating and not something that really we want to have to deal with so more recently you've probably heard of json format for alarma and it's also known as function calling in other libraries so openai calls this function calling basically they'll give you a um, json structure that you can use to call functions whereas in llama it's called just the format so um, we can supply a format argument and so it's json format i'm going to pass in json as the argument and so what we're doing here is we're just printing out the response and if i call that now we should find that we've got a JSON response and we see that that's even different again than what we had before. Try again. And we've got a JSON response there. And you see we've got a bit of formatting and a bit of extra spacing going on there. And you see that this is a different structure again. It's not even including a lot of the detail there. So we've got all this variation. It's a little bit frustrating for us to work with as developers. We kind of have to keep fingers crossed that what's being fed back is what we expect to do. And we could continue to try and prompt this and uh, put further detail in of what we wanted uh, with say like a JSON schema or something like that but it's never particularly guaranteed what we're getting back and so we have to do a lot of grunt work in order to get to what we want. So I'll show you briefly this call just over in um, another format as well so we've got the same call there um, but done with the OpenAI library instead. So this is important because I'm going to be using the OpenAI library for the, uh, for the rest of this talk. So we've got the same call there, list five cities, does exactly the same thing. If we run it, it should print out what we originally had on the, uh, the first kind of iteration of that. So you can see we've got back a string there um, with our list in it. So now if we take a look at bringing Instructor into the mix, so what we've got, if we bring in Instructor, Instructor is this library by Jason Liu, I think is his name, um, which is really great. And basically what it allows us to do is wrap the OpenAI library um, with, patch it with some extra um, behavior. So in this case, we can see um, that we're defining a Pydantic model here. And then we patch the OpenAI client library um, with 
uh, instructor with the behavior from instructor and what this does is it enables us to get this response model in when we call create to chat completions that response model allows us to pass in the model that we just defined um, in Pydantic, which is perfect because it will return to us then a typed um, object rather than just JSON that we then have to pass. So if you go ahead and try and run that, so what we're passing this time around is just a description which says London is England. I'm not actually generating the response there, but we should get city the city back from um, the um, model. So we're using Llama 2, same as what we did before, and when we print that out, we get the city output, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we want. And we've got all the behavior that we would have in Pydantic uh, models, which is great. We've got validations and things that we can use there as well. Um, what's interesting about this is that we can further make this a bit more complicated. Um, we can ask for that list of cities that we had before, which um, what, what we do is we actually ask uh, the client to then respond with the cities instead of which is a list of cities, a list of that city structure that we had originally. Um, and we can ask Llama2 from a Llama to return this instead. So let's do that. Five cities we've asked for. Now, occasionally, this has been a little less. Uh, successful, so we'll see how it behaves. It's taking a little bit longer there. I think it might fail while it's things because it's taking ages. Yeah, so we got a failure there. Let's clear that down and try again. So you can see that time round that did work. So we've actually got a list of cities New York, Tokyo, London, Paris, Sydney. So hopefully you can see that that's quite a powerful thing to be able to have that generated structure come back um, as instances um, of the, of a typed model that we can use without having to do any parsing. So we've literally not had to interact with JSON at all in that case um, or do any kind of description schema that we want to use we've literally defined the models that we want to use and the instructor is able to take that and pass it over and what it, under the hood it's got a, a number of retries that we can um, configure as well so it can go back and ask the LLM a number of times um, if it doesn't validate against those models the final thing I wanted to show while I was playing with these is how this comes into play when you might be using web scrape when you might be doing some web scraping so this is like a basic um, setup that I've got here um, so what I'm doing is I'm using a library additional library called markdownify um, and what I'll do is I'll comment out the majority of this so you can actually see what's going on first of all and first of all, using Markdownify and requests to go and get some contents from my website in this case. So if I run this, this is, um, oh, in fact, actually, there's a thought about being spat out as well. Let's try again. Not that it actually matters too much. So you can see that this is all the content from my website being returned as Markdown. So it's taking the HTML from my website, converts it to Markdown. And why we do that is, in this case, it's probably not so bad, um, but I want to reduce the length of the number of tokens that I'm going to be sending to LLM. So you can see that everything's been converted to Markdown. And what I'm going to do is retrieve a list of posts. So you can see that I am going to, so like we did with the cities there, I'm defining a post and it has a title and a URL I'm defining a list of posts and I'm asking the model to go off and query that from the content that I've returned from my website which is then transformed into markdown so within this if I pull up my website if you pull this up so we can see there's popular articles on there and there's also videos. The videos actually got an embed in it. So I think what happens with the videos is that they get stripped. So we're not useful for trying to get any data from that because it won't be a peer. Um, 
But what I'm going to do is basically ask it to return a list of posts. So we've said the response model is posts. Let's see what that looks like and if it actually succeeds. Now I should say as well that actually we're using the mixed raw model here. I do that because I wanted to increase the context window that I could have. I think it's 32K that you can have on mixed raw. Whereas Llama is somewhat small, I think. Llama 2 is somewhat small. And the other thing to say is that you can see here in Markdown, if I, I'm actually stripping some details. So I strip uh, SVG, JavaScript, and the head parts of the um, detail from the page because it's just not useful for what we're looking for. So we can see here we've got a number of posts. Let's see if those mark, match up with what we got on my site. So we've got self-hosting, generative arts, coding on Steam Deck, developing on Framework Laptop, and build your own MIDI-powered controller. So it's got all of them and it looks like the URLs are correct as well. I'm not going to go and pass them out, but you can see that we've been able to scrape that relatively easily. We haven't had to define any beautiful soup stuff or anything and kind of in, in go and inspect everything. It's quite a simple model. And the other thing is that we could potentially use this for a different blog. So somebody else's blog, we don't have to change any in the code, which is superb, really. You don't have to write a def define a particular one, um, unique for each site. So I've had varying levels with of success with this. So for instance, another site, um, this one is the one that is one that you might be aware of if you're into web scraping, which is Books to Scrape. So this is a site that you can just go happily go and scrape with no repercussions. Um, it, I defined here um, a book and a book list. I think with this, what happens is that basically there's so much content on the site that the LLM isn't able to distinguish between what it should be, what it's, what it's looking for. So we've got like a huge list here that's not filtered out. We've got um, book titles and details that aren't kind of all there. Um, so if I run this, what will happen? And you can see that we've got a bunch of books there, but actually the image <laughs> listings that we've got are from example.com, so not on that site. And in fact, if we actually peer into the books that we've got, uh, none of them exist on here. So t the catcher in the rye, for instance, the catcher, it's not a book that exists. So I think this is it getting confused with the huge the, the kind of and the amount of data of, that's being fed in. That's it. And then that's nothing to say about how well Instructor performs in this case. You see that we get Instructor output okay. It's actually the LM that's not generating what we want in the first place. So yeah, I really think that Instructor is a powerful library. Um, I'd urge you to go and take a look at it. There's a very good talk available by its creator on the AI Engineer YouTube channel. Um, yeah, and I just thought it was worth highlighting. Hopefully you'll go and check it out and have a play with it using Alama. And uh, I'll speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now. Bye.